Welcome to Great Loop Radio, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. I'm Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today, we are going to talk about a side trip on the Cumberland River to Nashville. And this particular side trip was actually voted in our most recent member poll as the number one side trip on the Great Loop, and Nashville is is certainly a tourism hotspot right now, so a great place to visit. And our guest will be Zig Dursky. Uh, Zig has done the trip. He lives in that area and is going to give you some of the tips on how to navigate your way up the Cumberland River to Nashville. So uh, we'll bring Zig in in just a moment, but as always, I want to take a minute to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes and Associates, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And now I'd like to officially bring Zig Dursky into the conversation. Zig, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure to be here, Kim. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, and we're we're thankful to have you because you are one of our gold loopers, so you've completed the Great Loop, and you did so on a sailboat, which we get lots of questions about. We'll probably have to have you back to do a whole topic just on that, Um, but for today, start off, tell us a little bit about yourself and your Great Loop adventure. Well, I've always been interested in sailing, but you know how life goes, and I really did not get involved actively in sailing until about 2013. Uh, I live up here in Hendersonville, Tennessee, just north of Nashville, and I joined the Harbor Island Yacht Club, and shortly after that bought a Hunter 30 sailboat. Um, YouTube was uh, something that was just coming around, and all of a sudden I was following all these stories about people on the, on the loop and having such a great time, and one thing led to another, um, and so I decided to take my sailboat Domino on a um, great loop adventure. And that started back in uh, November of 2017. Uh-huh. And then after that, it was just great. Uh, you know, those of us who have done it and those of us who are doing it just, you know, uh, just really appreciate the places we see, the, the people we meet. That's probably the highlight of the whole trip. And uh, just the great feeling of being able to complete the loop. Uh, that is not something that I thought I would do, frankly, when I started. It was, it seemed overwhelming, uh, but um, it's just a great experience. And so I'm very pleased that I was able to, to complete it. Yeah. And although it's not our topic today, we know there's a lot of interest in doing the loop in a sailboat. Any particular challenges you felt like you faced? Of course, you know, there are the places you have to unstep the mast. I don't know what your um, draft is on that boat, but, you know, anything, you know, the one big thing you would want sailors to know before undertaking the loop on a sailboat. Well, th- there are several really, but the, the critical ones are what you described, uh, you know, your draft. Mine is a four foot draft and there were several places um, where we were very close to the bottom. And so you also have to time your tides and, and things. Second thing, of course, is the height of the mast. Mine was 48, so you're absolutely right. I had to take the mast down before I went up on the Erie Canal. I put it back up before I crossed Lake Cos, you know, Oswego. Um, then I had to bring it back down for the Trent Severn, uh, and then again to get uh, out of Chicago, I had to to bring it down. So that that can be a little bit of a challenge, uh, but um, the savings on fuel uh, was was not an insignificant consideration. Uh, I, I have a Yanmar 12 horsepower um, diesel engine. And so um, it, it gave me some money. Let's just say it gave me some beer drinking money and some enjoyment <laughs> money that I could use for other things. <laughs> and that is a, a great way to go about it. And like I said, we'd love to have you back to talk about that specifically, because as, as you said, there are some differences, um, some challenges, um, but some benefits as well. So we'll, we'll save the rest of that for another day. Um, okay. Let's talk about visiting your home area of Nashville. Um, you know, let's kind of start from an overview. Why would you encourage people who are currently on the loop or people who are heading down the river system, even if they're not planning to do the full loop, to take the time and, and do this trip up the Cumberland River? I guess there are two reasons, and we all have different reasons why we do things. But from my perspective, well, maybe the first one would be Nashville. It has become just such an exciting town, a go-to place that if you're close to the area, I have to, uh, I have to encourage you to uh, 
uh, to try to come visit because I, I think you won't regret it. The second part is the Cumberland River is really just a very beautiful river. Um, I, I call it an intimate river because um, there are many places where you are real close to nature. There, there are cliffs, there are bays, there are marshlands, uh, wildlife areas. Um, and so again, this area for, for those of us who live here is, is just a year round playground for all things water. Uh, so those are probably the two biggest reasons that I would encourage people to, to take the time to, to come visit us in Nashville. Yeah, and those are two great reasons. Either, either one of them on, on its own would be a great reason to do it. You mentioned it is a year-round playground. Um, most loopers typically are kind of coming down the river system in the fall uh, mm -hmm. because they've played on the Great Lakes for the full summer season. Uh, so it typically is this time of year that people would be heading for Nashville, at least loopers. So um, is there anything special about the fall? I mean, I know the Tennessee River is known for the change in fall colors and the foliage you see along the way. What's the Cumberland like in the fall at this time of year? Well, in oh, the next very, few months. Yeah, very much the same. I mean, the foliage change is spectacular. And um, again, as you're coming down the river and just to be just surrounded by all this glorious color is, is just a wonderful experience. But the second reason is, you know, this part of the country also goes into fall holiday mode. And so, you know, for example, uh, if you're out at Green Turtle Bay, uh, you know, Patty's Restaurant, um, which is kind of a familiar landmark, has all kinds of Christmas decorations that are up in places that you can walk around. Uh, the same thing when you get into Nashville, Opryland Hotel, which is kind of a, a well-hidden secret in some way, decorates everything for the holidays. Um, so it just becomes a very festive time of the year. And, and, and frankly, probably the ideal time to come visit us because it is brutally hot here in the summertime. <laughs> and and yeah. right now, we are just starting to experience that, that, that great, perfect temperature time. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, another bonus for some, if uh, particularly if you're already on the river systems, um, some need to kill a little bit of time before they get to the Gulf if they don't want to be there during hurricane season or if their insurance exactly. won't allow them to be there during hurricane season. Um, so a side trip on the Cumberland is a, a great way to spend some of that extra time you may have. So kind of by definition, a side trip to the Great Loop is, is a river that you're going to have to go down and then backtrack. You know, the loop itself, the main route, you can just keep going without backtracking. The side trips are places you're, you're making a turn off the route onto another river that of course requires you to backtrack to get back to the main Great Loop. So distances are a consideration for people as they try to see, well, how long is it gonna take me to do that side trip? So tell us about you know, roughly how many miles you can pick statute or not, um, but sure. about how many miles it is from you know, where you would normally turn off the Cumberland River to continue the Great Loop to get to Nashville. Okay, um, so Roughly, let's let's use Green Turtle Bay Marina as kind of a landmark. From Perfect. there to downtown Nashville is roughly 150 miles. Okay. Uh, the the current, because you're going to be going upstream in one direction and then coming back the other way, the, the current is roughly somewhere between three quarters of a mile per hour and maybe a mile and a quarter as you're going up. Um, so it's very reasonable for, you know, for boats with, with stronger engines, uh, et cetera. Um, the current is controlled by the dams and locks that are, that are on the river. And they're really, well, there's, there are four, but two of them work together. So for instance, the, the lock at the end of the Tennessee and the lock at the end of uh, the Cumberland, which is Barkley, those two are really one waterway system because of the canal that connects them just right above the land between the lakes. So, depending upon how much water they're discharging, that influences the current in that part of the river. And then um, Cheatham Lake in, in uh, Ashland City is another place where there's a dam. And then the third one is up uh, to, you know, northeast of Nashville in the Hendersonville area, Old Hickory. If you look at the, by the way, you can go to, um, if you just Google um, Cumberland River uh, current, Nashville, we're, we're, we're extremely lucky. We have a gauge right downtown Nashville that will tell you what the current speed of the water is. And uh, that's kind of where you can determine, you know, what you're going to be kind of going up against. Okay. Um, you mentioned, Zig, that it was, I think you said 150 miles, correct? 
Yes. So every looper boat is different, um, but kind of a rule of thumb we use for planning is that many loopers will go about 50 miles a day on average. Mm -hmm. Some of that is controlled, of course, particularly in more rural areas by places that are available to either anchor or to tie up. Um, so if we're going, you know, strictly on distance, it's probably a three day trip up to Nashville, roughly. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. however, uh, what is kind of your recommendation and we'll, we'll get into very specifics on places to tie up or anchor, but, you know, from a planning perspective, what's kind of your recommendation on the number of days you would suggest, um, for cruisers? And I know it may be different for slower versus faster, but what are your thoughts? Well, one of the things that, that also comes to mind is if you are in a hurry or if uh, you don't want to spend a lot of time on the water, Green Turtle Bay has a courtesy car. And what you could do is you could rent a car close close there. And then it's only about an hour and, and maybe 15 minutes to get to downtown Nashville. So I offer that as another alternative for maybe for some cruisers who don't want to spend that time. On the other hand, especially this time of the year, it's, it's, really, it's really a beautiful area to go through. Um, here are some spots that I've kind of found along the way. And let me do this. I like to break the river up into like three sections. So the first okay. part is Green Turtle Bay to, uh, to roughly around um, Clarksville. That part of the river is, is reasonably straight. Um, the entire western shore is the land between the lakes. So there, there really is no development. There are some beautiful bays, anchorages, uh, there are there are a lot of, of ramps where you can bring your dinghy up. Uh, places are very dog friendly or animal friendly, so you can do that. And so I would say this is a, an extremely beautiful area. And then Clarksville to Nashville becomes a little more industrial. The channel is narrower. There really are no good anchorages until you get to Clarksville. And then a little bit of the same thing from Clarksville to, to Nashville. Um, so you kind of have to plan a little bit once you get past, um, you know, that Cumberland River area. But in that, that very first 40 or 50 miles, um, I mean, there are a number of, of coves. Uh, for example, um, right as you start at Green Turtle Bay, there's, uh, you know, Buzzards Rock Marina and Kudua Harbor Marina, which, again, are beautiful anchorages, or you can actually stay at the marina. Uh, there's another great fishing spot at mile marker 57. It's called Crooked Creek Bay. And uh, again, it's a good anchorage. And if you enjoy fishing, uh, that's a beautiful spot to stay. Um, shortly after that, you get into a wildlife area. And so the river actually spreads out. The channel is, is well marked and it's in the middle. But if you look around you, you see all these marshes. Um, you can see eagles and, and wildlife all around you. Uh, and so one of the things in that area is, is Bumpus Mills Marina. And then again, this is a waterway that comes off the, the Cumberland River, and it's a recreational area, all kind of all by itself, where you could spend time. Um, sometimes if I'm, if I'm kind of moving, you know, if I need to get somewhere in a hurry, because uh, either it's really cold out there and I'm in this cold sailboat or, or other reasons, uh, probably the real neat spot would be in mile marker 87, right around Dover. That's where Fort Donaldson is. And this is a historic fort, Civil War. This is where President Grant kind of made his, his name. Um, he basically took that fort and then shortly thereafter took Nashville for, um, for the Union. But there's a, there's a beautiful creek in there that you can go in and, and anchor. And um, Dover could be accessed again by dinghy. There, there, you know, there are docks that you can come back there. Um, and then shortly after that, you get into an area. This would be around mile marker 102. So maybe this would be like the second day if you're cruising through that area. Uh, you get into the Cumberland City area. And um, again, there is... Uh, there's an anchorage right behind an, an island there that, um, that, that gives you plenty of protection from some of the commercial uh, tows that are coming up and down. Uh, and then probably after that, the next thing would be uh, the Clarksville area. Uh, and again, you know, I encourage everybody to look at the charts. And by the way, there are two guidebooks, which I, I should mention to you um, that, are, that are available and that you can look at to, to do this. Um, so in Clarksville, what they have is a uh, courtesy city dock, uh, but the Clarksville Marina is a, is a beautiful brand new marina where you can, where you can stay. 
uh, and it's close to the city. There are restaurants in the area. Again, it's dog friendly and full service. Uh, so um, uh, it's a, a place that I like to stay uh, just because after, after being out on the water and anchoring and doing all of that, this is a good place to kind of pick up on supplies and do some other things. So I've gotten you as far as Clarksville. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to keep going to Nashville? <laughs> Let's take a quick questions? break. Um, we'll play a message from one of our sponsors. And then when we come back, we'll pick up and, and take us the rest of the way to Nashville. And then we'll spend some time talking about Nashville proper. So we'll be back in a moment. Okay. Curtis Stokes and Associates is a yacht brokerage company that specializes in great loop capable boats. Curtis Stokes is a supporter of AGLCA at the Admiral level. If you're looking to buy or sell a Great Loop veteran from a trusted and knowledgeable broker, visit the company on the web at curtisstokes.net, email curtisstokes at curtisstokes.net, or call 954-684-0218. We're back on Great Loop Radio. Today we are talking about a side trip on the Cumberland River, which takes you to Nashville. Our guest is Zig Dursky. Zig is a gold looper, and that this is his home water. So he is very experienced with navigating the Cumberland River. He's given us lots of reasons that we should want to do this. Um, and he's taken us as far up the river as Clarksville. So let's go ahead and continue, Zig, and, and kind of tell us what to expect from a, a navigation and a places to, to stay standpoint as we work our way from Clarksville to Nashville. So the river after Clarksville becomes much more of a narrower channel and there are very few places that you can actually anchor. Uh, I think the next obstacle, if you will, on the river is the, uh, the Cheatham Lock. And I should say that there is commercial tra travel on, uh, traffic on the, on the river. You can probably expect one, maybe two tows during the day to pass you. And the Cheatham Lock, um, Again, you just have to anticipate because there could be commercial traffic in there that has priority. Uh, then really the next spot that, that you can anchor are, is just southwesterly of the Nashville area. And uh, one place is the Commodore Yacht Club. This is at mile marker 172. It's a private yacht club, but it, um, if you call ahead and if they have space, they'll be very happy to take you and uh, they're very accommodating and friendly and it's just a, a good place to stay. Uh, just a little bit down the river, uh, there is the Rock Harbor Marina, which is a full-fledged marina. Uh, this is usually where I stay because they've got a restaurant, they have full services, you can haul your boat out there if, you are, if you're having any issues. And the other thing is it's reasonably close to Nashville where you can take an Uber or a Lyft from there and you're probably 10 minutes from downtown Nashville. So it's a good, it's a good home place from which to do uh, your exploring of the Nashville area. You can also get a rental there, which might be a better alternative if you're going to, if you're going to, to uh, spend some time down there. After that, it gets pretty commercial. Um, there is a lot of traffic. I mean, we still have uh, coal that's moved up into the Gallatin power plant and uh, fuel and you know sand and gravel. So you do have to be careful, uh, especially since the river starts to turn a little bit in these areas. Uh, downtown Nashville also has a city dock. Um, it's right across from the downtown area next to the football field. So it's an ideal location. Problem is it's not really truly secure, doesn't have really good services, and you're really just on a pier out in the middle of the river. So, you know, as toes go by, you're gonna get rocked. Uh, but again, it's a spot if you may, maybe only wanna stay for a day or, or just one overnight, that might be a good place to be able to, to stay. Um, I should mention that bridge heights, especially for those of us who have masts, are, are usually not a concern except for downtown Nashville. There is one railroad bridge down there that only has a 47 foot height over the water. So you're going to have to get that opened. And the only other spot is Clarksville has a railroad bridge also that's 50 feet. And of the times that I've gone back and forth there, I've only had to have that opened once. It just depends on the height of the water. Um, the, the trip into Nashville is amazing. You take that turn past uh, Highway 155 and all of a sudden downtown Nashville skyscrapers open up in front of you. And if you're familiar with the area, you know that we have the AT&T building, which we call the Batman building. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it is just incredible because all of a sudden you can see it and all the other buildings. And then as you come by on the right hand side is the, the downtown waterway where they do their concerts. Um, and then, and then literally, you know, the other bridges, there's a, one of the bridges that they turned into a walkway. So as you, as you come by, it's not uncommon to have people wave at you and, you know, and, and yell greetings and things like that. But we are in Nashville. Um, and, uh, I don't know if you have any questions, but I'm excited to share a couple things about Nashville. Uh, if, um, if you would like me to. Yeah, absolutely. And your excitement shows. As soon as you started to talk about that <laughs> skyline, we could see it on your face. So, um, yeah, please tell us, you know, since this is your home area um, and I have visited a few times, but it's it's always nice to have the inside scoop from somebody who spends a lot of time there. So, yes, please tell us um, both about visiting Nashville by boat, you know, and tying up there. Um, but also what are the best things to do in the city? The wonderful thing about Nashville is that it has it has come to its own really in the last 10 years. Um, and so the neat thing is there is almost something for everybody there. Uh, of course, its historic roots are in country music. Um, and so, you know, I, I would recommend sort of a list of different things, you know, visiting the Grand Old Opry, if you have not done that, is quite a treat. Uh, there's also the Country Music Hall of Fame and they have different exhibits from different time areas of different country music stars. You can also do a lot of different types of tours. One of them is down into the Music Row area, and that's the historic area where a lot of the recording was done. Uh, right next to the downtown area is Broadway, and that's where it, it has become a little bit of a party bill down there. You know, brides showing up for celebrations, and and uh, you can take different different types of rides, and, and all of the restaurants and bars are all open downtown there. So just going down there to you know, walk around is a joy all in itself. Um, fall season, Titans football. I mean, you're, if you if you if you put your boat next in the in the city marina, you'll be right next to the stadium. We also have the the hockey team, the Predators, so you can you know get tickets ahead of time for that if you'd like to see that. We have a AAA ball club, brand new park. It's a uh, a club for the uh, Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, Several years ago, we built the Skirmerhorn Symphony Center. So for, for a different style of music, they have fall concerts going on the whole time that you can take a look at. It's acoustically amazing facility. First Art Museum. Um, in fact, right now coming up very soon, there is a um, Van Gogh uh, lights presentation that they're doing. And I'm curious to see how that's going to be because I, I'm not even sure how they're doing that, but it, it, it involves projecting lights on buildings that, that depict much of Van Gogh's artwork. I actually attended that exact exhibit in Charlotte a couple of weeks ago. It was really interesting, um, really amazing the way they did it. It was a beautiful display. So yeah, definitely if that's coming to Nashville, I highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to saying yeah. that. That's, that's great to hear. Um, you know, the other part of it that I think would be important to notice, it, it's it's probably about a 20 minute ride. It's the Opryland Hotel. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing facility. It now has um, four glassed in areas that are basically botanical gardens. They've got paths, you can walk through them, you know, water running by you. Um, you can take a ride in a riverboat. Uh, there is a year round water park there that if you, if you want, if, you know, if you want to take advantage of that. Um, so, I mean, there's, and again, we haven't even started to talk about things like, you know, the uh, the mansions, Belmede Mansion, there's a botanical garden. And so again, Trip, to, Trip Advisor or any of those other sites uh, would be probably where I would recommend you go look. Um, but I highly recommend, you know, at least thinking about it because I, I don't think anyone would be disappointed um, if they do take the time to do that. Yes. Now, us loopers really like to eat, <laughs> so, and I know Nashville is, is really be also becoming known as kind of a foodie town, and I know a lot of the um, fine dining we have here in Charleston, and even some of the, the just kind of regular dining places that are unique to Charleston have opened up additional locations in Nashville. There's several of them now, which I find super interesting, um, but tell us a little bit about any specific um, places you would recommend personally or places that you know are kind of favorites for tourists that are coming to Nashville? 
Well, again, you know, Nashville is known for its hot chicken. So there are several places like that that you can go for its barbecue. We have a, a, a pretty significant Korean population and there are some amazing Korean cuisine. And probably in the last four or five years, um, a lot of nouveau kind of cuisine has come in. And so um, uh, the Gulch is an area of Nashville that you can walk to from the waterfront. And um, it is, it, it's full of different little shops, cafes, um, you know, uh, international type of restaurants. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, I have, I don't, I guess I, I don't really have any place that I want to just automatically recommend mm -hmm. because they're all over the place. I mean, no matter yeah. where you go, if you're, if you're on second Avenue, I mean, every other spot is either an Irish pub or some <laughs> type of a, you know, so that, and, and again, we've come a long ways from being a one McDonald town in terms of cuisine. And so, uh, again, just try something new. That, that would be probably the other thing that I would recommend. It's a great place to, um, uh, for example, go to the Opryland Hotel. In this one area, there's a huge, there's some fountains, waterfalls and all that. In the middle of it is a rotating bar. And right next to it is a restaurant where you're actually sitting in amongst all these water pools. You have goldfish floating around you. Uh, it's just it's just a wonderful, just a wonderful experience. Yeah, that definitely. So, um, you know, we've covered kind of most of the, the information about Nashville Anything I didn't ask from a from a local who may have some thoughts that I, I didn't think to ask about? Um, no, I mean, I, I think the, the key message that I would have is that 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 you can get to Nashville several ways. I mean, you can do it by car rental, you can do it by boat. Uh, I, I think I think it's 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 an important place to come visit in whichever way you want, and I don't think you you you'll regret it. Um, you do have to do some planning. Um, you know, the, it, it, we are on a river. So the, the most important thing is make sure you check ahead. If we have uh, heavy storms, I mean, we've had currents of over four miles per hour on the river, which is great if you're going back, but coming up would be quite a challenge. So uh, just just do your planning ahead. And obviously I'm, I'm available, you know, on, on the AGLCA site. If anybody has any questions, I'd be very happy to be, a, you know, talk to you and answer any questions questions or concerns anybody might have about coming up that way. Thank you. And that's very kind and generous with your time. And actually, um, for those of you listening, I actually uh, invited Zig to do this after he was very helpful posting lots of local information in the forum when a discussion was going on a couple weeks ago about the Cumberland. So um, final question, you know, we always talk about taking the Cumberland to Nashville. Is the river navigable past Nashville? And is there anything that you would recommend loopers take that time to go see and do beyond Nashville? Absolutely. My home port is up on Old Hickory Lake, uh, which is about, uh, well, it's about 10 or 15 miles northeast of the downtown Nashville area. So if you take the Cumberland River from downtown Nashville to mile marker 216, that's the Old Hickory Lock and Dam. Again, that's where it starts to get really windy. Uh, just so you know, it, as the crow flies, it's about 10 miles. As the river flows, it's closer to about 23, but it's still very beautiful. And one of the things you'll do is you'll pass by the, the General Jackson uh, Riverboat, which is just magnificent uh, as it's docked next to Opryland. Once you get up on Old Hickory Lake, that is really an incredible playground. Um, we have restaurants, we have marinas, there are all kinds of coves. Um, there are rivers that, that branch off that area where there are campgrounds. Um, it, it is really my year round playground. And uh, you know, if you get to about mile marker 223, you end up with a cove where we have the Harbor Island Yacht Club, which is a, it's a private club. Uh, primarily for sailboats. And we've been there for over 55 years. And so it's it's a pretty amazing sight when we have the regattas, if you're cruising up there and all of a sudden you can see 10 or 15 sailboats, you know, all with their spinnakers out, beautiful color. Um, again, uh, it's a place just to kind of come up and enjoy. It's it's peaceful, it's a place where you see a lot of fish fishing going on, uh, kayaking, paddling, um, Actually, hunting is going on, you know, in that area as well. Um, but um, 
I would invite you again, let me know if you come up to the area, we'd love to host you. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the part of Tennessee. Yeah. Zig, this has been wonderful. I like to tell people that the Great Loop has something for everyone. So if you're a, a fisherman, if you like history, if you're a foodie, you'll find all that in the loop. And I think in this 30 minutes, you've proven that you'll find all that on the Cumberland River. Um, we've touched on all kinds of things from wildlife to uh, paddling, to eating, to drinking, to all the things you can find in Nashville and, and the beauty and, and um, of the scenic river of the Cumberland. So Zig Dursky, thank you so much for introducing us to your home waters. And I, I think you've really inspired a lot of people to head that way. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And to those of you joining us today, thank you for being here. We'll be back next week with another episode of Great Loop Radio. Until then, safe cruising. <laughs>